Now let's stay with the issue of e-tolls, discussed now with Leighton Baird of the Automobile Association. Leighton, good evening. You probably heard Vio Marga saying basically it actually is scrapped because uh, anyone who's accumulated a massive debt from boycotting e-tolls is never going to have to pay it directly. This must be good news for you. I think it is absolutely good news, Sally. You know, when you um, you know when you see the SMS that went out uh, late this afternoon, um, that uh, you know uh, effectively um, you know a pronouncement has been made on ETOLs, meaning that you know it's been scrapped, but that a final announcement on your outstanding debt will be communicated later. I think that's a very clear indication that that debt is going to be be scrapped. So that's certainly good news for karting motorists, um, and one I think they've been waiting a long time to hear. Of course, the reality is uh, the user pay principle <laughs> has well and truly uh, been defeated. So individuals using the toll, and as Vuyo Marga was saying, what really got everyone's goat is that you're having to pay a toll to literally move from one part of your city to another uh, to go to work in a further part of the province. It's just made everyone very angry. But the reality is we are paying anyway uh, because taxes are collected and they're distributed and part of the taxes are going to be used. So is it really a win, Leighton? Yeah, I think it certainly is a win, Sally, because there was a lot of concern around, you know, what government was going to do going forward and whether they were going to continue with the system. And, you know, we, we saw in the past, Sunroll had a very heavy-handed approach, uh, you know, a, a fist-in-an-iron-glove approach to motorists who weren't paying. Um, so I think for a lot of people, this raised a lot of worry about, you know, where they're going to be pursued and how were they going to be pursued to get that money back. Um, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is you're absolutely correct. And I think that's the point that, you know, when we did our surveys on ETOLs, that was raised over and over again. People are paying taxes on fuel. People are paying VAT. People are paying income tax. There is a lot of money available in Treasury. Um, it's a question of how that money is being allocated and appropriated. So people are saying, well, you know, we're already paying for this stuff to happen, for roads to be maintained and for roads to be developed. Now we've been asked to pay more. Um, and, they, you know, we know that comp compliance rates were low, under 20%, but they were, they were still obviously people who were paying. Um, this just means now, finally, um, that if you weren't paying, A, you've been vindicated, and B, you don't have to worry uh, that you're going to be pursued for that debt. So I think it's, uh, it's a lot of good news for a lot of, for a lot of people tonight, Sally. About people who were doing what they thought was the right thing, even if they didn't like it, continued to pay. Vuyamaga didn't yeah. say that there's no way they can't claim back. He kind of said to be determined. Mm. So do you think that there's a case for those people to try and claim back some of the money that they paid into a system that ultimately failed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's one of the things we've been saying all along as well, is that those, those people who have been paying need to be compensated by, by getting their money back. So we certainly would want to see um, a situation where people can either claim the money they've paid back or, um, you know, a portion of it, at least a very big portion of it is given, is given back to them. We think that's only fair. Um, you know, there are people out there who, for various reasons, have felt that they needed to pay to comply with the system. And, you know, the, the, these are very solid citizens, people who felt they were doing the right thing. Um, the fact that there were many others who didn't pay doesn't mean that what they did in paying was the wrong thing. It just means that they did what they thought was best, which is good. But they now need to be compensated. Because I think what has happened today, Sally, um, is that government has finally acknowledged that a system that they introduced um, against the will of the public in, in, in Gauteng, in the province, has failed. And it hasn't only failed, it has failed dismally. Um, and, the, you know, people need to be compensated for, for propping it up for whatever reason. Um, but, so, yes, certainly we would want to see those people getting their monies back again. How exciting uh, is it to hear that they might be able to use those gantries, turn them into some sort of, uh, you know... Um, a way to monitor traffic for law enforcement purposes. Mm. Uh, it certainly seems like the Gauteng mm. government has got some very exciting plans underfoot. Could you tell us a little bit more? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm not privy to all of their, their thinking just yet, and I'm hoping that obviously something, something more concrete and detailed does come out a little later. 
Um, one of the things that we know in, in, in South Africa and in Gauteng is that we have too few road traffic law enforcement officers. So anything that is going to be assisting traffic law enforcement in the province is certainly something that the AA would welcome. If those gantries are put to good use uh, by doing speed over distance and by monitoring traffic flow uh, and by checking for people who are uh, not adhering to the rules of the road, yes, certainly we would be extremely excited that that development is happening and that those gantries are going to be used for something effective and positive and work towards making the road safer. Um, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what the, what the province comes up with. But if that's one of the things on the table, they, they will have 100% backing from the AA in doing that. I have to ask you, um, we're coming up towards the end of the month, and I don't know if it's the first Tuesday or the first Wednesday of the month that we get the fuel price adjustment. Mm. Um, you'll know better than me. But mm. what are you hearing? Are we in for a fuel increase or a fuel decrease in the next month? Any word at all? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, the, the data from the Central Energy Fund, unaudited data, is indicating, unfortunately, increases to petrol and diesel. Around about a 50 cent increase to petrol across all grades, so more or less. Uh, but I think the real worry at the moment, Sally, is the increase to diesel, which is showing an increase of around 1 Rand 60. And we are heading into the last week of, of October, and it is the first Wednesday of every month, uh, Tuesday midnight. So that's when the price is adjusted. And it's looking like it definitely is going to be an increase. I th for, for us, it's just the right. quantum of what that increase is going to be. But it is certainly going to be an increase, and in the case of diesel, quite right. a significant so increase So, Leighton, I'm well. going to say thank you and goodbye.